So this experiment is called a Coulomb balance. You may have already done one that was called a current balance, or if you haven't done that one already, you will soon then go together. The Coulomb balance is an experiment to measure the forces exerted by static charges, that is by electrons on surfaces that are arranged so that those surfaces can repel one another and we can actually directly measure the forces that are exerted by these, uh, these charges. So in front of you is the whole arrangement. On the left side is the balance device. There's a laser on the right which shines a beam of light off of a mirror and I'll show you that right now. So if you follow the blue laser over here, you can see the beam on the paper coming from the back. The beam is right here. It comes over, strikes a mirror here, comes back up, and then I put the scale here so that the beam of light hits the scale at a specific spot. And we're going to measure where that spot is, which measures the tip of that mirror with a lot of accuracy because of the lever arm. So I can just demonstrate that by just tapping this just a little bit, and you'll see that move up and down because it tips this mirror back and forth. This mirror is attached to this beam which pivots on two sharp edges here and here. And then the upper beam is also attached to this plate which is connected electrically through this red wire to the positive side of a power supply. So we're actually going to put, if you like, positive charge on this upper plate. Relative to that charge, we'll put negative charge on the lower plate. It's connected to the black wire to that. To make it easier to make this measurement, I've arranged over on the far right, next to the scale, a voltmeter, which will measure the voltage that's being applied to those plates. So you'll be able to see this spot and the voltage at the same time. So to do this experiment, we need to know how this balance responds to a force. And we'll calibrate it by using the force of gravity. We'll put little weights on here and see how that moves. And then we're going to apply different voltages and see how it responds to different voltages. In order to do some calculations, you'll need to know the area of this plate. You need to know how far this lever arm is from uh, that spot over there. And I think that's probably all, but we'll figure it out as we get going here. So with a meter stick, we're going to measure the distance from the mirror to the scale over there at the other end. In order to do that approximately, I'll just put the stick here on the table. I'll place the far end of the stick so that it lines up with the face of the scale. And then back here on the left, just note where this mirror is coming across here and make an estimate of its position. It turns out to be about 145 centimeters from that end. Now I say we can do this approximately because we're going to, not going to be making an extremely exact measurement and one centimeter out of 145 is less than one percent. So we can we can get away with a little error here. This angle will change that spot position over there on the scale. Now let's measure these plates. So we can use the same thing here. I want to really touch them, but I'm just going to set it right on top of them and then look at the scale. And I see 80 centimeters on the left and 93 on the right as I lay the scale in here like that. So about 13 centimeters side to side in this direction. And in this direction it should be the same. They're square, but we'll see. 
scale's upside down for you. Let me flip it around the other way so you can actually see centimeter marks. I don't want to use English units here. So, try not to touch anything too much. It looks like if I put this at 110, it's about 122. No, 123 on the far side, so 13 centimeters in that direction, too. So now we can add some weight to that upper plate and cause that spot to move, and we'll start to try to calibrate this apparatus. So that you can see it better, I'm going to change the position of the camera. So now I've set this up so that you can see a voltmeter, which measures the voltage that's applied to the two plates, and the position of the laser spot on the scale at the same time. So you can't see what's going on to your left, but there's nothing there except that balance that you saw before, and we'll come back and look at it again later. We're going to do some things over at that end by uh, changing the voltage and by loading it to measure how it responds to different loads. So let's begin with no voltage on it by adding a little weight, which will put the two plates into contact. This will measure the lower limit of the motion of those plates. Now I've taken some care that at that lower limit, the two plates are as close to parallel as I can make them. And then when I take the weight off, give it a little nudge, it'll come back up. We'll come back and look at one problem with this experiment later, but it's a consequence of how it's moving. But for right now, just think of the two places changing their separation. And we're looking at how that separation depends on the forces. So to measure those on uh, the consequences with the position of the laser spot up there, we need to know the distance from the center of the plates to the pivot arm. And I'm measuring that right now with a meter stick. And I come up with 22 centimeters for that distance. And again, we'll come back and look at that with a, another view uh, in a moment. So now let's add a known mass to the center of those plates that will load the upper plate and cause it to rotate downward so you can be you can measure the calibration to a force. The force is the force of gravity on whatever little weight I put on here and I've got a 50 milligram weight I'll just drop on here. And that's where 50 milligrams takes it. I can add another 20. And another 20. And another 10. So that now we have a total of 100 milligrams on it. And that should be enough to calibrate the force using the force of gravity on those little masses that have been added to that plate. If I put much more on there, the two plates will come into contact. And since we don't have anti-gravity, the only way we can go is down by adding mass, which is pretty much the limit of what we can do here. So I'll take off the 50, one of the 20s, and another 20, and, a, and a little 10 here, if I can grab it. Now, we'll just add some voltage. Start out with no voltage on it to speak of. Disturb the system a little bit by this, so the equilibrium will be slightly different. Shouldn't be too much. And I'm going to just reach over and increase the voltage a little bit. And 
let's go up to 25 volts. We'll do it again. That's 50 volts. So there's 74. One hundred and forty volts. There's 200. Okay. So what happened there was I went up to about 210 or 215, and then the force started to accelerate the upper plate, it came into contact with the lower plate and uh, uh, set the voltage at zero because they connected to one another. And uh, right now they're held together by a little residual electrostatic charge, one on a little push. Uh, let's go back up again to about 100 and see what happens. I'll take it up gradually. There's 205, 204. It's about here that it started. 210. And then 218, and it made the contact. Okay, let's look at what's happening over here at the other end while we're doing that. I'm going to move the camera. So first of all, when we did the calibration by adding a weight to put the plates in contact, I just added a penny in the middle like, like that. And then to measure the response of the plates to a force, I added a 50 milligram mass here in the middle like that. And we measured the distance from the center of the plate to the pivot arm with a meter stick by just putting the stick across here and noting the ends of something like 150 and 128 here to get the center to center distance from the pivot arm to the center of the plate. The mirror is up here, the laser is off to the right, and then the beam is hitting that stick over at the far end, which we've already measured. 
So then when we apply voltage, I'll show you what happens. This is no volts. That's 100 volts. That's 150. This is 201. And then we just go up just a little bit more. It's 204. and it starts to accelerate downward. When they come into contact, then the voltage goes to zero between the plates and there's a resistor in the circuit which limits the current so we don't do any damage when that happens. So you can see one of the problems with this experiment is that this lower plate is fixed and the upper plate rotates and as it rotates it wedges that gap and then as it comes down into contact because this edge is closer only when they're in contact can it be parallel or if it's you could set it up another way right now and set up so they're in contact when they're parallel as you come apart because of that wedge the effect is non-uniform across the gap so these are some of the things we have to think about in analyzing the result of this experiment. So we've just completed an experiment on the Coulomb balance, which uses two parallel plates, one of them on a pivoting hinge, so that as it goes up and down, a mirror on that back hinge changes the position of a reflected spot of light from a laser here on a scale over here. We have next to that we have a meter which measures the voltage. These two wires go to the power supply which delivers voltage which also goes to this and to that. The, this one is connected to the upper plate, that one to the lower plate. And then to calibrate it we've added some masses so we do that with a little mass, and here's the example of the 50 milligram mass, which we could just drop on there like that. And the response of that balance to that mass determines how it responds to forces. And in terms of that, we can measure the force of electrical charges.